Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to continue our discussion of the color balance RGB module. In the last episode we discussed the vector scope and the color dimensions. If you need a refresher, feel free to go back and look at that episode. One thing to note is that we're supposed to use the color calibration module for color correction and only once we're come to a correct white point we use the color balance for grading okay let's crack on the first one is the hue shift this slider rotates the whole vector scope you keep an eye on it you can see how it's rotating the whole vector scope so it's substituting hues. You still have the same amount of chroma and the same amount of pixels as in, in the lightness, but the whole vector scope is being shifted either counterclockwise or counterclockwise. Next we have global vibrance and we can use the slider to affect the chroma of the whole image. To the left decreases the chroma and to the right increases it. However, the slider prioritizes the colors with low chroma. So we'll be increasing more the neutral colors without exaggerating the already colorful ones. As you can see, even pushing it completely to the right well, I mean it is exaggerated it's a very colorful picture but it's still not overblown see here the effect decreases the chroma so the radii are just increasing the whole vector scope decreases in size and increases it Next we have contrast and the contrast is applied to the luminance channel so it doesn't affect the hue and chroma. What it does is it increases the luminance above a specified fulcrum which is by default 18.45% but we can change it in the masks tab when we get to it and it decreases it under that fulcrum or if you if you decrease the contrast then the effect will be completely reversed however using it on the whole image changes the effects of the filmic module so it's not recommended it's there mainly if you want to use it in a part of the image without affecting the white and black points of the image. So use it with care. Next we have the linear chroma grading which you can use to affect the chroma in the image either global so you can decrease it, increase it or you can use it separately on the shadows, midtones, and highlights, and you can change what is considered shadows, midtones, or highlights in the masks tab, and we will get to that. Same effect, but only affects the part of the image described in the slider. Next, we have the perceptual saturation grading, and this one affects the luminance and chroma dimensions together. The constant hue but changes the luminance and chroma at the same time and you have as well a global setting and three separate ones for shadows, midtones and highlights which work exactly the same as the previous one. Next we have the perceptual brilliance and this one as well works on the luminance and chroma 
let's compare it to the saturation here we have maximum saturation well almost and of course this works the other way around okay the next tab is called four ways and as you can see it has four groups all comprised of the same sliders luminance hue and chroma the first is called global offset and you can use that to change the whole image you can change the luminance or select a hue select any hue and then add that color to the chroma of the whole image you can see the effect here much clearly now that I'm adding a greenish color the whole vector scope is pulling towards the green part of the color wheel if I change it now we're going towards yellow towards red, blue, so on and so forth. You can use the pipette here or the selector to choose the color from the image. The next two are shadows lift and highlight gain with exactly the same sliders. However, the first one works on the shadows, the second one on the highlights and those are defined in the masks. The last one is power and this one as well works on the whole image and the same as with the global offset it doesn't use the mask it has the same sliders or controls however there is a slight difference well there's a big difference but slight difference in usage is that this one the effect is um, noticeable quite quickly as opposed to the more gradual effect in if you're changing the offset. Technically this one is changing the offset of the uh, of the color graphs, the S graphs, and this one is changing the power, so the incline, if I'm not mistaken, but I might be. No. In any case, the effect is more or less the same. Um, we'll have to see if it really makes a big difference in practice. And the last tab is the masks. And this one defines the controls for the previous two tabs. Those masks are certainly not the masks that we're used to from other modules. These are the masks that define the difference between the highlights and the shadows, the midtones, and transition between them. By default it's quite well fine-tuned and we shouldn't have to change them often but it's good to know how they work in case we need to. First we have the luminance ranges and you can see here there are three graphs and these graphs represent the shadows mask, the, the highlights mask and the midtones mask. So the darkest one here is the shadows. You can see that it's at its highest in the shadows. And the brightest one is the highlights. And this one is for the midtones. And this is the opacity of the mask on the y-axis relative to the pixel luminance on the x-axis. So for the shadows, the pixels with the least luminance, so the shadows, have the highest opacities and it's the opposite for the highlights. And here you can see it's the midtones. However, and for the midtones, if you notice, there are no pixels with the maximum opacities. Next control is shadows fall off and this one controls the 
transitioned from fully opaque, so 100%, to fully transparent, 0%, for the shadows mask. So you can set the softness or hardness of that transition. In effect, we're going to be affecting this graph. As you can see, pushing it to the right makes the change abrupt or harsh. And it's of course affecting the midtones as well, since if we're pushing this, the midtones will start higher up on the graph and to the other side will make the graph smoother and the falloffs as well and next to this we have the show mask button and as you can see the part of the image that is not masks is the one that's going to be affected and this will change by if we make the fall off smoother or harsher. The next control is the mask middle gray fulcrum. And if you remember, we already said that the highlights and shadows are defined with relative to that fulcrum. It's actually this point here, and we can either increase it or decrease it we do we do have the mask as well and you can see the effect it has on it again the part that we still can see is what's not covered by the mask and the last one in this section is highlights fall off it's the opposite of the shadows just affects the slope of the highlights curve and the right side of the midtones and there you go so effectively for this image with the default settings those are considered highlights these are considered midtones and these are considered shadows. So now we can see here using these buttons what we are affecting in for instance the shadows lift or the highlights gain or any of the controls in the master tab that has shadows, midtones and highlights. Next section is threshold and the first control is white fulcrum and this one sets the white point luminance in EV. Uh, it's used to normalize the power settings in the four-way tab. So it controls the effect of the power section. If you're using this one, don't forget to set this one. You can use the pipette and it will automatically find the maximum luminance from the selected region. Next we have the contrast gray fulcrum which sets the middle for the contrast module. So it sets the part of the image that the contrast module is not going to affect since it actually works on the areas above and below it. If we're using the scenery third workflow then we've already set the global brightness in the exposure module. And the correct value here should be around 18 to 20 percent. So my guess is that we probably never have to use or change it. Again, we didn't need to use the contrast um, slider all that often, so it's related to it. And the last settings are for the mask preview. It's to control the checkerboard that you see here. You can change the color of the squares and you can change the size as you can see. That's it for the color balance RGB module. It's at the same time simple 
and quite complicated. So we're going to have to see how we use it in practice. That's the most important part. And the next video is going to be a showcase session where we're going to focus specifically on this module and put it into practice. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have any corrections, questions or recommendations, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.